I have been to nine schools. Nine. It's a big number for someone who hasn't even finished high school yet. Most would assume it was because my family moved around a lot, but that's not the case. I have lived in three different states, but other than that, I haven't really moved anywhere else until this year when I decided to attend boarding school. So why did I change so many schools? The short answer is because so many schools have their ups and downs, and finding the right fit for a kid is really hard. It is because of this I have gotten to experience so many different teaching styles and find what works best for me. I would like to start by telling a little story from a school I attended back in fifth grade when I lived in Ohio. I was a shy kid, which most people cannot tell nowadays because I'm rather outgoing. But when I was younger, I struggled to make friends and preferred to spend most of my time by myself. This all changed when I switched to a school called Schilling. It was an unusual school with an even more unusual method of teaching. They required all students to take an entrance exam before attending and had a very customizable schedule to optimize learning. Schilling offered no sports, no foreign languages, or even art classes for its core schedule. Instead, you as a student would take math, science, English, and history on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. These classes were quite long and would usually last up to two hours, which yes, as a fifth grader, was tough. But most of the classes were hands-on and rather than being sedentary. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, though, every student got to customize their schedule with a large variety of shorter classes. If you were someone extremely passionate about art, you could fill your schedule with different visual arts and pottery classes. I was interested in sports, music, and language. So I took an Aikido class, which is a Japanese martial art, as well as fencing, guitar, and two language classes. The best part was that your classes on Tuesdays and Thursdays consisted of anyone at the school who was interested in the class. I remember that in guitar specifically, I was the youngest person in the class and that everyone else was in high school. This kind of learning is highly unusual. And the only other time I've seen a learning model that allows customized schedules and at the same time the intermixing of grades was at one school a few years ago when I moved to New York. I understand the system isn't for everyone. And we were fortunate at Schilling to be small enough to be able to implement this alternative method of teaching. But the amount of confidence and joy I was able to learn, uh, to gain from this was exponential. I had friends as a fifth grader who were seniors. I was the only girl in my Aikido class, which might be intimidating to some, yet to this day is probably my favorite class I've ever taken. The thrill someone feels of tackling someone twice your size is indescribable and can only be expressed through a giant grin that was visible on my face every day after that class. I was never forced to take any classes outside of my core classes. So if I wasn't good at art or sports, I never had to take them. This allowed me to figure out what I was interested in. I never woke up and didn't want to go to school because every day was a new adventure. And I was supported by a community that not only consisted of my grade, but the grades above and below me. Flash forward two years later, when I moved back to the East Coast and began my education at the school previous to the one I am at now. It was an old girl school, which I'm not saying is a bad thing at all, but it was a big change for me as someone who was so used to being at co-ed schools. The people at the school were also very different. They were competitive because the mindset was that you had to be the best. You had to score number one on the next exam because if you didn't, you'd lose your chance for a spot in a good university. A lot of the schools in the US rely on a class ranking system in which universities ask schools for their top students and based on that list, decide whether students are welcome at their university or not. It was toxic to say the least, and many friendships seemed forced because you became friends with the people who were around your rank. And the worst part was that this mindset began in middle school. This was so different from Schilling where none of this toxic mindset existed. 
where the mindset was we helped each other as a group to perform better. Because what's the point of dragging another student down for the sake of your own victory? Education is not a battlefield. It's a vital part of life. So why do we fight so hard against each other just to be quote unquote better than our peers? There was another big change waiting for me at this new East Coast school. A change to something that seems very normal for most schools. It was that the school had a strict schedule that allowed for no freedom of choice of classes other than choosing a foreign language class to take, which the options consisted of Spanish, Mandarin, and French. We didn't even get to pick a sport until seventh grade. The one thing we got to choose was being a part of a school club. That was the one escape I had there. I spent most of my time building stuff in the engineering lab whenever I could, but because of the rigid schedule, I didn't have much free time at all. As I got into the school year at this new school, I could feel my attitude changing about the way I viewed education. Like the other students, I no longer had a sparkle in my eye when I went to school. Many of the other students seemed as though they woke up in the morning, went to school, did homework, and then went to bed just to repeat this daily until they graduated. And I noticed this in middle school. These weren't college kids who were done with constantly learning, but kids who had just started their educational career a few years ago. It was devastating. I spent five years there and was able to build some of my closest friendships with some of the girls there. But I can speak for everyone at that school that it is nearly impossible to love school and learning at that institution after that constant miserable experience. I am fortunate though to have extremely supportive parents that have allowed me to follow my passions and make a lot of my own decisions. And they have also taught me to be independent. So when I decided I could no longer handle the stresses of my school because of the amount of mental health issues it was causing me, they allowed me to apply to Zalem and have since then encouraged me to perform to the best of my abilities. As much as I would love to praise my current school as the perfect place that helped me escape the stresses of my past school, that would be a lie. I've experienced the good and bad sides of education, but education is subjective. Finding the right school is different for every student. We all learn differently, but most major systems don't realize or take this into account. The education system around the world that governs our lives as people are not exactly suited to foster creativity and learning. A small but dramatic example of the backwards nature of learning nowadays is as simple as sitting in rows. Henry Ford, one of the principal architects of the assembly line process of mass production, proposed to have children sit in rows in order to prepare them for factory work. Yet to this day, where we as humanity boast that the industrial revolution is over in most countries, we still impose this rigid seating arrangement that limits the interactions of children and defeats the purpose of learning, erasing any chance for open discussion just because of the strict nature of the seating arrangement. Some schools have started to break from this tradition, offering round tables now to create a more open environment, meant to offer group rather than just individual learning. Back during the time of the philosophers in ancient Greece, education was all about group learning and was done in a public open environment, simply because the idea was two minds are better than one. Yet we have revoked this way of learning and succumbed to the robotic classroom nature that leads to boredom and lack of interest. Education, for the most part, has become a business, profiting on the success of children. If you think about it, the reason everyone here pays so much money to go to this school is just to simply go and study at another school, creating a long and tiring cycle of more than 16 years in some cases of sitting in a classroom for hours, listening to teachers who aren't always concerned about the kids they're in charge of teaching. This mentality of forced systematic learning has been causing the decline in mental health around stu among students around the world. We as a society are forcing children, most under the age of 18, to supposedly determine their future through grades and the expectations of them getting into a good university. There's no longer this idea of learning for the sake of interest and fun, but now it's all for the sake of a good mark on your next exam. 
An interesting anecdote is that in TOK the other day, Mr. Parker, my teacher, asked us to individually take a short quiz about happiness. It was scored one to six, with a four and up being considered that you as a person were happy. Most would like to assume that a majority of the students in the class scored at least a four, but the reality was that most got a two to a three. The sad reality of this experiment is that many of my peers, including myself, don't feel as though every day is filled with sunshine and rainbows. When Monday hits, we are forced to wake up at 7 a.m. for the next six days and trudge along to classes, some of which we don't like. Trying to grasp the complex information all for the sake of some exam we take in a year that determines what colleges we can go to. The assumption is that success in life comes from a good education, in which someone is assumed to have completed 12 years of primary and secondary school, but also have attended university and graduated with at least a bachelor's degree. I can vouch for many of the students here when I say that the stress of university is astronomical. When that three on an exam comes back, for some, it feels like the end of the world. Getting into a prestigious university, for many, isn't a want but rather something pushed on them as a stigma from the students around or from their parents. It is assumed that you will go to a socially de good declared university such as America's Ivy Leagues, Oxbridge in the UK, or even ETH in Switzerland, which boasts a certain prestige and class which many aspire to attain in order to get a good job. I have experienced this mindset over and over again throughout my academic journey. The fact that I can only confidently say that one school out of nine, truly fostered my interest in learning is extremely disappointing and more than a little concerning. We as a society need to understand that everyone learns differently. So by imposing very rigid forms of teaching, we are only catering our education towards a certain group of people. There are schools like Schilling around the world that allow for alternative way of teaching, but they are rare and often not considered as good as the standard school. We as a community need to offer more options for students, especially those who don't necessarily learn best in a classroom setting, because education is so vital, and everyone should have the opportunity to learn to the best of their abilities. We also need to be more supportive so that students who are struggling have opportunities to recuperate and regroup. Every day shouldn't feel like a cycle. Every day should be filled with an interest and love for learning but we don't offer that to students and overall give very little support. School is stressful and I don't think anyone will argue with that. So when a school offers a counselor or a mental health aid to help students deal with the stresses we have to face, either because of workload or socially, it allows students to somewhat balance the struggles they face because of the rigid education system they are thrown into at a very young age already. Thank you.